Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's time for another monthly favourites. August just sped by. I had hoped by now to have shared our kitchen makeover, but we had one piece on order that just took forever to come in. It is all finished now. I do plan to film that this week, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully that video will be coming soon. But I didn't want to not film my monthly favourites, so I thought I'd jump on and do that first, and then hopefully, like I said, the kitchen makeover video will follow soon. I'm going to be doing two videos, one showing kind of the before and after and the details of the kitchen, and then another video showing kind of how we vlogged the whole process and how that went, and also breaking down the costs of everything and what we spent on our kitchen renovation. But today is not about that. Today is about monthly faves and fails. And as always, I will start with the fail. And the fail is this. Toilet cleaner. It's a decent cleaner. Does the job. Smells good. I mean, tropical sunshine. Doesn't that sound lovely? I thought it sounded lovely. What is not lovely is how it looks in the toilet. So the color of it, you can kind of see there. It's like a yellowy, orangey colour. Trust me when I say it is not a colour you want to see in your toilet bowl. So if you use this toilet cleaner, you have to scrub every last little bit of it off and make sure there's no residue left behind or else it just looks disgusting. Like orangey, yellowy. It almost looks kind of brownish in the toilet. It's horrible. And like I said, the smell is fine. It works fine. But you can never just like squish some into the bowl and let it sit there for a while and like I said you have to make sure every last bit of it is removed when cleaning because who wants to clean the toilet bowl have it smell good but look gross I honestly just didn't even think about it but now that I've used this I will not buy another toilet cleaner that isn't blue or green or clear yeah not a good color so that is the fail for the month. But moving on to favorites, I'm going to start with food as always. And a recipe I wanted to share is for these vegan lemon bars. They're like paleo, vegan, whatever. They're gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, all the things. And I just thought I would try this recipe. I didn't kind of really know what to expect. I've never eaten a classic lemon bar before, so I didn't have anything to compare it to. But Grant and I absolutely loved these. They were so delicious. It's got like a creamy, tangy, lemony top and then like a, almost like a biscuity base, but it's not. It's made with almond flour. It's so good. I will leave the recipe down below. Everything as always will be linked down below. Do check it out if you're looking for a dessert that is kind of healthy, <laughs> delicious, tangy, tasty, sweet. So, so good. Another food item I was really enjoying in August was an evening snack of paleo toast. I've talked about this paleo bread that I buy before it's for nerdy it's almost never in stock so when i do my online grocery shop i order like three or four loaves so that if they are actually in stock i can put it into the freezer because like i say they're almost never in stock but good toast and on there i would put olivani spread in place of butter because i don't need dairy and then honey and i was enjoying the eggmont honey in particular i meant to bring a bottle out here but i haven't got one just any eggment honey. I like the kind of cloudy honey rather than the clear runny one. So, so good. I would have that honey on toast for my evening snack most evenings in August and I really enjoyed that. I say enjoyed past tense because I haven't been able to get that bread for a while so no toast for me. If you have a paleo bread recipe that is reliable for making toast, please let me know. I would love to try it. Preferably without eggs, although I know that's a bit of a stretch. I'm trying to avoid eggs, but I do eat eggs if it just can't be substituted in the recipe. I do have like a paleo rolls recipe. I think I've shared that before. I'll link it down below either way. It's really good, but I tried to do it with a flax egg instead of like regular eggs and it just didn't work. I want to talk about sparkling water. I'm not generally a sparkling water or fizzy water fan because... They usually have like a baking soda taste to them and there very often is bicarbonate of soda in sparkling water and for that reason I don't generally tend to like it. I'm busy doing a bit of a pantry makeover that will hopefully be coming soon and I wanted a glass bottle, a particular kind of size and shape and I found this sparkling water, it's called NZ Natural and the bottle was right so I bought that 
and I had a drink of the water and it is so good because it's just sparkling water there's no bicarbonate of soda in it it was just so refreshing it's like kicked off this craving for me for sparkling water or lime and soda which I also really enjoy not too sweet but it has a kind of fizzy element really really good this water wasn't like any other sparkling water I've ever tried and I really enjoyed it and then the last food item I wanted to talk about is this it is the select which is just the countdown brand extra virgin olive oil spray so this is an aerosol spray I have tried different oil sprays before and they usually clog up or the stream doesn't come out like a spray it just comes out like a spurt and I've never really found one that's good until now this is so good it comes out in a fine mist and it's so convenient if you just want to lightly mist a pan and not use a lot of oil if you're frying something or what I like to use it for is I'll put all my roasted veggies or my veggies that I'm going to roast on a baking sheet and then just spritz it with this oil and then sprinkle seasonings on instead of like tossing it with oil in a bowl it just gives like a lighter layer of oil you can get in all the nooks and crannies you can kind of cover the surface without like I said drenching it in oil in a bowl you can likely spritz it onto a salad or wherever you would use olive oil and you just want a little bit of it so so good and it hasn't clogged I've mostly used up this tin it's maybe well I'd say I'm, I'm about halfway through and it hasn't clogged it still comes out in a fine mist it hasn't gone wrong it's just so good I just like it when a product just does what it's supposed to do no fuss no mess and this is one of them I don't have any fashion or beauty favorites so we'll move straight on to home and the item I want to talk about is my new Wusthof knife. I had a knife block that we bought in England for five pounds when we first moved to England in 1999 and I was still using those knives and they are not the best knives they are no longer very sharp and for ages I've been wanting to invest in a good quality chef's quality knife that I could just have for the rest of my life and I tried buying a couple of I think it was Hampton and Mason knives from Briscoe's and they didn't hold up I didn't know how to care for knives I was putting them into the dishwasher and the handle broke and they became blunt and they wouldn't sharpen and all the things and I kind of thought I need to actually do this properly and do some research and I spent ages researching knives the tang, the metal, the handle, the blade, the balance, the weight, all the different Japanese knives and German knives and whatever. And I decided in the end that I wanted to buy Wusthof knives. And luckily you can get them from Briscoe's so I didn't even have to pay full price. So my first knife I decided to purchase was the 20 centimeter gourmet chef's knife. Looks like that, standard chef's knife. Thought it would be a classic. And this I got in the Briscoe's half price sale for $60, so they're normally $120. So if you are new to New Zealand or planning on moving to New Zealand, don't ever spend full price at Briscoe's. They are always having sales, just wait for a sale. So I ordered it online because we don't have a Briscoe's near us. My package arrived, I unpackaged it and immediately cut myself. I was like, this is why we can't have nice things. I can't be trusted apparently, I need supervision. It is so sharp. We were just amazed. Getting a proper knife is one thing, but going from a super crappy knife to proper knives is like a whole different ball game. We were just, we could not believe how sharp this is. It goes through raw meat like you're cutting butter. Tomato, you could probably just rest it on there and it would fall through the tomato. It's just amazing. It's been such a pleasure to use. I'm actually almost kind of scared to use it because it's so sharp. I have purchased the sharpener to kind of keep it in good nick and I haven't cut myself since. And I know sharp knives are safer than blunt knives, but this is so, so sharp. And it's just, you just know when you are working with quality. It just feels good in the hand. It's just well balanced. I do want to get a smaller one and kind of build my collection slowly over time. I didn't want to throw this into the knife drawer either, or the drawer where I keep my other knives. I wanted to kind of really look after it and preserve it. So I bought, it's actually, a self-adhesive magnet that you're supposed to use on your dashboard to like mount your cell phone or whatever I bought one of these magnets and I've put it into my pantry and that is where I store the knife the magnet has like a rubber coating on it so it's not just like metal on metal and when I'm not using my knife I just pop it up in there so it's not in the drawer being like knocked around with other knives and I also hand wash it I'm really looking after this knife and I plan to have it probably for the rest of my life 
So Grant and I have just reached the point where we are tired of the false economy of buying cheap things and then having to repurchase them. And when it's a basic tool like a knife that I use every single day, I just felt it was time to invest and I highly recommend doing so if you are kind of thinking about it. It's been so worth it so far and it just makes cooking a pleasure and I'm really looking forward to getting another couple for my collection and to using these knives going forward through the years. Okay, moving on to entertainment on Netflix, we watched Explained the Mind. I think I talked in last month or the month before about watching Explained, which is an excellent series on Netflix. Very interesting, very easy to watch, but super informative and also entertaining. And the mind obviously talks about things to do with the mind. And that was just as interesting and entertaining as the previous one. So I would recommend that. Grant and I also enjoyed watching Restoration Australia. That was a two season series, obviously set in Australia, where people take really old buildings and then restore them. And we enjoyed watching that. We enjoyed the first season more than the second, I think, because we preferred the presenter of the first season, but we really enjoyed both of those. And then after that, we moved on to Cabins in the Wild, which is set in Wales. And they have various people who have a budget, I think it was 11,000 pounds. They have set dimensions that their cabin needs to be, and it needs to be transportable. So it needs to be those dimensions while being transported, but then they can expand it when on site. And then each episode, one of the cabins would win. And then there was like a grand finale win it at the end. And we just really enjoyed that, seeing the innovation and the different designs and styles. So that's something we had a lot of fun watching in August. On YouTube, a black content creators channel that I want to recommend is Evelyn from the Internets. She is so random, but I find her funny and entertaining to watch. I love when she goes into her, I think she's from Nigeria, or I think she has family in Nigeria. Anyway, she does this like African accent, which just makes me really laugh. And she's just, she's just one of those content creators who just does her. She doesn't care about what's popular or what other people are doing. She just films what she wants to film and she's just herself. As far as I can tell, obviously I don't know her in real life, but I've been enjoying her channel, so I wanted to mention it. And then a video I want to mention is by, her channel name is Alexandra's Girly Talk. And she did this ASMR facial treatment video. So basically she went for a facial treatment and filmed the whole thing. And occasionally she does voiceovers in the video, but she's whispering when she does it. And I've watched this a number of times because I've had like an awful time sleeping lately and I just wanted something that would relax me. And watching this video is just so relaxing. It's all my mirror neurons are firing and it's just so good. So if you're looking for something that's gonna really chill you out and relax you, then I recommend this video. It's, it's just so soothing to watch. I kind of skipped through the bit where they're doing the extraction and I will warn you, you need to watch it on a browser that has a really good ad blocker because otherwise you'll just be like really relaxing chilling out and then up will pop this like really loud ad which is super annoying i wish you would turn off ads in the middle of the video i know that that's kind of done automatically by youtube so if you are watching a longer video of mine and an ad pops up in the middle i'm not putting those there youtube puts them in there although you can i think opt out of them on certain videos so i wish you would opt out of those mid-roll ads on that video but other than that if you can watch it on a browser with a good ad blocker it's a really good one to chill out and then i only read four books in the month of august and this is what they were and what i thought of them i read 61 hours by lee child this is one of the jack reacher books I always enjoy the well-researched attention to detail in these books. In this particular one, the freezing cold weather in South Dakota is almost like an extra character in the book. It was um, very well described and influenced the story the whole way through. And I enjoyed this as much as I have the others. The Jack Reacher books can be read in any order because they aren't written in chronological order. They're just kind of standalone stories. I read The Mother-in-Law by Sally Hepworth. I really, really enjoyed this book. There's a bit of kind of family stories and dramas and also a little bit of a mystery. It switches between the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law and it's not like it goes back through their life. It kind of switches. It says past or present, which helps you keep track of where you are. And then it's just an incident or one story. So it's kind of like a collection of stories which help tell their story. 
and each time it switches between the two characters, it's told in the first person. And I found it so interesting to see from the mother-in-law's perspective and to see from the daughter-in-law's perspective and how misunderstandings happen and how their relationship kind of develops. It, it, I really, really enjoyed this. It's a really good one. I read When Life Gives You Lululemons by Laura Weisberger. This was highly entertaining and gave me a peek into a world and a lifestyle that I'm glad I'm not a part of. I'd recommend this. It was a, a good entertaining read. I finished Origin by Dan Brown. I really enjoy his books. They always good kind of adventure stories but with interesting information and they're well researched and I enjoyed the twist at the end of this one as well. I've just become aware that this box has been visible the whole time. I just like bring a tub out of the house with the bits I need to show. Anyway, hope you enjoyed my monthly fails, faves and books. If you have anything to recommend to me, I would love to hear about it. If there's something that you've watched or read or eaten or especially recipes, if you know of any kind of paleo recipes that you want to share, I would love to try your recipes or like I said, any products that you think I might particularly enjoy. I always love hearing from you guys and getting your recommendations and I actually do have a video coming up in which I try some of them so stay tuned for that as well thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one